Fauvism and Expressionism. Around 1905, two influential art movements emerged, marking the onset of 20th century painting, Fauvism in France and Expressionism in Germany. Both movements shared common traits, including their rejection of Impressionism, vibrant use of colors, and instinctive techniques. However, they diverged in their approach. Fauvism maintained a certain discipline and remained connected to French artistic traditions, emphasizing harmonious composition. In contrast, Expressionism appeared markedly intense and instinct-driven, displaying a strong critique of tradition through bold, almost barbaric colors and distortion. Fauvism and Expressionism shared a common goal, to evoke emotional and spiritual responses in viewers through a personalized perspective of the world, conveyed through anti-naturalistic forms and vivid palettes. Fauvism in France Fauvism, an avant-garde art movement, emerged in France in the early 20th century, primarily between 1904 and 1908. Although the Fauvist style extended beyond 1910, the movement itself spanned a brief period from 1905 to 1908, featuring three exhibitions. The inaugural Fauvist exhibition took place in Paris in 1905 at the Salon d'Auton. Art critic Louis Vauxel famously exclaimed Donatello among the wild beasts upon seeing Renaissance-inspired statues amidst dazzling colored paintings, coining the term Fauvism, from the French word fauve, meaning wild beast, to describe the movement. The Fauvist paintings were notable for their bold, vibrant colors, combined with simplified and abstracted subject matters. Fauvism was influenced by post-impressionism, merging with the pointillist techniques of artists like Seurat and the neo-impressionists, especially Paul Signoc. Some Fauvist artists were captivated by the artistic expressions of African art and drawn to the primitivism of Paul Gauguin, while others found inspiration in Paul Cézanne, leading them towards the path of Cubism. Fauvism had a significant impact on the development of modern art. The movement challenged traditional artistic norms and paved the way for a new era of artistic experimentation and innovation. Important representatives of Fauvism were Henri Matisse, André Derain and Georges Rouault. Henri Matisse Henri Emile Benoit Matisse, 1869-1954, was born in northern France and was a painter, engraver and sculptor. In 1887 he went to Paris to study law, but his inclination towards the arts led him to enroll at the Académie Julian and the National School of Fine Arts. Matisse's painting is influenced by Zan Simeon Chardin, Nicolas Poussin, and Antoine Watteau, of the Baroque, Classicism and Rococo eras. His work has also been influenced by contemporary Impressionist and post-Impressionist artists, notably Edouard Manet, Cézanne, Van Gogh, Gauguin, and Paul Signoc. Henri Matisse's paintings were distinguished by their vibrant colors, design and creative imagination. His artworks often feature simplified shapes and a sense of movement. Still life and nudity remained his favorite subjects. Throughout his career, he experimented with different styles and techniques. His art was influenced by other cultures as well. He traveled to North Africa, incorporating decorative motifs of Islamic art. African sculpture and Japanese engraving to create his own style. Matisse's paintings are celebrated for their revolutionary approach to color, form, and composition. His legacy continues to inspire and influence artists around the world.
Henri Matisse. Joy of Life. Created in 1905, Joy of Life currently resides in the Barnes Foundation, Pennsylvania. This large-scale artwork portrays a serene landscape inhabited by nude male and female figures, deviating from traditional naturalistic depictions. The painting bursts with vibrant, explosive colors, characteristic of fauvism, aimed at eliciting powerful emotions and presenting a unique perspective on the world. Henri Matisse created an imaginary earthly paradise, showcasing various moments of the human experience within a single, harmonious composition. In this pastoral masterpiece, women dance in a circle in the background, while other figures embrace, gather flowers, play music, and recline in the woods. The figures are depicted in a simplified, almost primitive manner, with exaggerated proportions and distorted forms. Their bodies seem to merge with the surrounding nature, blurring the boundaries between human and natural elements. Joy of Life draws inspiration from works such as Cezanne's The Bathers, Titian's Bacchanal of the Andrians, and Paolo Fiomingo's Mutual Love in its subject matter. The use of vibrant, non-naturalistic colors is a striking characteristic of the painting. Matisse employs bold hues, such as intense blues, greens, reds, and yellows, creating a sense of heightened emotion and energy. The composition is often interpreted as a celebration of the human experience and the harmonious connection between humanity and nature. The nudity of the figures symbolizes a return to primal, natural states, free from societal constraints. The painting can also be seen as a rejection of conventional artistic norms of the time, challenging traditional representations of the human form and embracing a more liberated, expressive style. The painting's distinct characteristics include flat color surfaces, bold contours, and a primitive essence. The influence of African and Oceanic art is evident in the simplified forms and masks-like faces of the figures. Although based in classical landscape scenes, the seemingly casual design and simplification of elements make this artwork revolutionary for its time. It showcases Fauvism's mission to provoke viewers' emotions and challenge traditional artistic norms. Henri Matisse. The Dance. The painting, created in 1910, currently resides in the Hermitage Museum, in St. Petersburg, Russia. The dance is considered a seminal work in the history of modern art. Matisse initially sketched a preliminary version of the work in 1909 as a study, which is currently housed at the Museum of Modern Art in New York under the title Dance One. The artwork depicts human figures engaging in a rhythmic dance. Their bodies are merging in a circular formation, while the flowing lines and curves convey a sense of joy and energy. Each dancer is engaged in a unique pose, adding complexity and motion to the composition. Matisse employs simplified, almost abstract forms to represent the human figures. The bodies are depicted in essential shapes, emphasizing the emotional and physical aspects of the dance rather than realistic representation. Matisse employs bold and vibrant use of color. Hues such as reds, blues, and greens dominate the composition, creating a lively and harmonious visual experience. The color choices evoke a sense of passion, vitality, and the primal energy associated with dance and human expression. These bold color choices, non-naturalistic representation, and a focus on emotional expression, aligns with the principles of the Fauvist movement. Matisse drew inspiration from non-Western art and primitive forms. The simplified and rhythmic figures, evoke the influence of tribal art and ancient rituals, 
contributing to the painting's timeless and universal quality. The circular arrangement of the dancers creates a sense of unity and continuity, drawing viewers into the heart of the dance. Viewers are invited to feel the rhythm and movement, experiencing the joyous spirit that permeates the canvas. The dance showcases Matisse's innovative use of color, form, and symbolism. Its timeless appeal lies, in its ability to transcend specific cultural or temporal contexts, offering a visual celebration of the human spirit and the joy of communal expression. Henri Matisse The Dessert, Harmony in Red The artwork, crafted in 1908, finds its home in the Hermitage Museum, St. Petersburg. Originally intended to be executed in blue, Matisse opted for a warm, opulent red hue, giving to the painting a sense of vibrancy and depth. The painting is renowned for its bold use of color, its playful composition, and its representation of domestic space. This masterpiece portrays the interior of a dining room, where a maid meticulously arranges fruits and wine on the table. Matisse, akin to the Impressionists and Post-Impressionists, does not aim to portray reality. Instead, he emphasizes the ability of color to stir emotions in the observer and celebrates the artist's liberty to shape a reality independent of traditional artistic conventions. Within this piece, Matisse skillfully blends large color units with intricate linear decorative motifs, deftly handling the interplay between the painting's two-dimensional surface and the illusion of three-dimensional space. Through the bold strokes of red, he creates a sense of depth, seamlessly connecting the tablecloth's floral patterns with those adorning the wall. This contrast, highlighting flat and vertical surfaces, permeates the composition. Moreover, Matisse ingeniously renders a view from the window, revealing a lush garden full with blooming flora and a little house in the distance. The dessert, Harmony in Red, exemplifies Matisse's ability to create a visually striking and emotionally artwork through his innovative use of color and composition. The harmonious coexistence of interior and exterior elements further enriches the viewer's experience, inviting them to explore the intricate details and emotions embedded in the scene. André Derain André Derain, 1880-1954, was a French painter, sculptor and co-founder of Fauvism, an influential art movement of the early 20th century. He was born in Chateau, a suburb of Paris, France. Derain's artistic style was characterized by bold and vibrant colors, as well as a strong focus on expressive brushwork. During his time at the Académie Camillo in 1898, where he was studying engineering, Derain also attended painting classes instructed by Eugène Carrière. It was there that he encountered Matisse. Matisse managed to persuade Derain's parents to permit him to abandon engineering and dedicate himself exclusively to painting. Consequently, Derain enrolled at the Académie Julian to nurture his artistic talents further. During the summer of 1905, the two artists collaborated in the picturesque south of France, producing artworks they later presented in an exhibition that same year, Salon d'Automne. There the critic Louis Vauxel, upon viewing the vibrant colors, described the paintings as wild beasts. Fauvism was born, derived from the French word les fauves. Among Derain's renowned pieces are his depictions of the River Thames and the Tower Bridge in London, where he employed the pointillist technique, involving the placement of colors in the form of dots, 
a method pioneered by neo-impressionists George Seurat and Paul Signoc. Derain's art is remarkable for its vibrant color palette, simplistic yet powerful forms, and the influences he drew from Paul Cézanne, Cubism, and primitive art. His works consistently capture the beauty of nature and people taking pleasure in its wonders. André Derain The Turning Road This painting, made in 1905, is housed in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. It captures the beauty of Lestake, a renowned location in South France that fascinated numerous Impressionist and Post-Impressionist painters like Paul Cézanne. What immediately strikes the viewer is the departure from traditional norms in the portrayal of landscapes and figures. The artist boldly broke free from conventional color palettes, opting for a distinctive approach. The landscape is painted in vibrant, non-naturalistic colors, while the figures exhibit a deliberate disproportion reminiscent of Henri Matisse's elongated figures in Joy of Life. Derain focuses on expressing emotions and impressions through colors rather than realistic representations. The colors are bold and striking, with vivid blues, greens, fiery reds, yellows and oranges dominating the composition. The brush strokes are expressive and energetic, giving the painting a sense of movement and vitality. The trees are depicted with the fiery hues of red, orange and blue, suggesting the intense heat of summer. Yellow, symbolizing sunlight, permeates the composition, casting an illuminating glow. Through the use of flat layers of color that intermingle, the artist creates a tangible sense of volume and depth, transforming the canvas into a vibrant, colorful collage. In addition to the lush landscape featuring trees and houses, scattered human figures inhabit the composition. At the top of the painting, a cart drawn by a red horse is steered by an indistinct figure. The sole discernible detail is the person's attire, a striking yellow-green hue. At the painting's base, more human figures come into view, some at rest and others in motion. Their facial features remain elusive, yet their attire provides subtle cues about their gender, if they are men or women. This masterpiece is celebrated as one of the artist's finest artworks, aligning with the principles of Fauvism. Its depiction of landscapes and shapes gives an almost abstract quality. Embracing the Fauvist movement's daring use of colors and simplified forms, this painting served as an inspiration for subsequent Expressionist artists. André Derain Charing Cross Bridge The painting, created in 1906, currently resides in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., U.S. In André Derain's painting Charing Cross Bridge, viewers are presented with a vibrant and dynamic portrayal of the iconic London landmark. The scene depicts Charing Cross Bridge against the backdrop of the city skyline. The bridge is a central focus of the composition, extending across the canvas. It is depicted with simplified and bold geometric forms, emphasizing its architectural structure. The bridge spans the width of the painting, connecting both sides of the composition. Behind the bridge, the city skyline unfolds with a mix of buildings, rooftops, and structures. The architecture is abstracted and rendered with a vivid color palette, showcasing Derain's Fauvist style. Derain's portrayal of the bridge against the modern cityscape reflects the changing dynamics of urban life during this period. Beneath the bridge, there is water, from the River Thames. Derain uses expressive brushstrokes and bold colors to suggest the reflections of the bridge and cityscape on the water's surface. 
the entire scene is infused with vibrant and non-naturalistic colors. Derain employs bold blues, greens, reds, and yellows to depict the elements of the composition. The use of intense colors contributes to the painting's emotional impact and departure from realistic representation. The brush strokes are lively and energetic, creating a sense of movement and spontaneity. Derain's distinctive brushwork is visible in the loose and expressive strokes that define the various elements of the painting. The artist skillfully plays with light and shadow, enhancing the visual interest of the scene. The contrast between light and shadow creates a dynamic interplay that further emphasizes the three-dimensionality of the bridge and surrounding structures. The overall composition captures the spirit of modernity, reflecting the transformation of urban landscapes in the early 20th century. The simplified forms and bold colors contribute to a sense of innovation and departure from traditional representational styles. While the artwork retains recognizable elements of the London landmark, the painting is not a literal representation but rather an interpretation infused with Derain's emotional response and avant-garde artistic vision. The composition invites viewers to experience the vibrancy and modernity of the urban scene through the lens of fauvist expression. George Rouault. George Henri Rouault (1871–1958) was a renowned French painter and printmaker whose artistic journey began at the young age of 14 when he apprenticed as a glass painter. This early experience, characterized by bold black outlines and vibrant colors, significantly influenced his future artistic style. In 1891, he further strengthened his skills by enrolling at the National School of Fine Arts, studying under the guidance of Professor Gustave Moreau a prominent symbolist painter. Rouault's early works were influenced by Impressionism, but he later developed his distinctive style with black outlines, intense emotional expression, and a focus on religious and tragic themes. In 1905, Rouault became associated with the Fauvist movement, a group of artists known for their bold use of color. He exhibited his works alongside them at the Salon d'Auton. Influenced by Fauvism, his art embraced strong colors and distorted forms, aligning with the movement's principles. However, Rouault soon distanced himself from Fauvism and pursued his own unique artistic path. Rouault was deeply influenced by his Catholic faith, which shaped his work and inspired many of his religious-themed paintings. Rue's artistic focus centered on depicting diverse human figures and religious themes inspired by the passions of Christ. His later works became more somber and introspective, reflecting his concerns about the state of the world and the human soul. Over time, his art evolved drawing closer to the style of German Expressionism. George Rouault At the Circus, The Mad Clown The artwork, produced in 1907, is currently housed in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. It is a notable example of Rouault's exploration of the human condition through the lens of circus performers. This painting portrays a clown accompanied by an acrobat, depicted in intense, somber hues. Unlike typical joyful and vibrant circus scenes capturing performers in action, this painting portrays the characters post-performance, wearing expressions of melancholy beneath their thick makeup. Ruo's fascination with clowns as a subject matter can be seen as a metaphor for the human condition highlighting the masks people wear to hide their true feelings. 
The use of vibrant colors and dramatic brushstrokes adds to the emotional intensity of the painting. Ruo's focus was on depicting the psychological turmoil of circus individuals and complexity of human emotions, leading him toward German Expressionism. German Expressionism often focused on the emotional and psychological aspects of the human experience. The use of dark shades and bold outlines accentuate the agony and isolation experienced by the two figures, effectively conveying these intense emotions to the observer. The composition showcases Ruo's ability to convey profound emotional depth through his unique artistic vision, inviting viewers to contemplate the complexities of the human experience. George Ruo. Christ Mocked by Soldiers. Painted in 1932, this artwork is currently housed in the Museum of Modern Art, New York. Christ Mocked by Soldiers is part of Ruo's larger series titled Miserere, a body of work that explores themes of human suffering, mercy, and redemption. The central theme of the painting is the suffering of Christ at the hands of soldiers. Ruo's portrayal captures the physical and emotional pain endured by Christ during this moment of humiliation and torment. The vulnerability of Christ is a recurring theme in Ruo's depictions. The choice to depict Christ in a moment of humiliation emphasizes his humanity and the depth of his sacrifice, encouraging viewers to empathize with the figure. The composition is dynamic, with strong diagonals and a sense of movement that contributes to the overall intensity of the scene. The soldiers' gestures and the contorted posture of Christ create a visual tension, emphasizing the dramatic nature of the moment. Ruo's use of a bold and contrasting color palette is a distinctive feature of his art. In this painting, deep reds and blues create a dramatic atmosphere. The application of thick, expressive brushstrokes contributes to the overall emotional weight of the subject matter, conveying a sense of anguish and brutality. Ruo, apart from fauvism, is often associated with expressionism, and this painting exemplifies the movement's emphasis on conveying emotions and subjective experiences. The distorted and intense expressions on the faces of the soldiers and Christ contribute to the emotional impact of the artwork. Ruo often used religious themes as a means of commenting on contemporary social issues, prompting ongoing discussions about the nature of suffering, the human capacity for empathy, and the redemptive aspects of enduring hardship. In summary, George's Ruo's Christ Mocked by Soldiers is a significant artwork that combines religious symbolism with a modern and expressive visual language. The painting invites viewers to engage with the profound themes of suffering, compassion, and the struggles of human existence. German Expressionism. German Expressionism was an art movement that developed in Northern Europe in the early 20th century, primarily in Germany around 1905. It is considered one of the most influential art movements of the 20th century and had a profound impact on various art forms, including painting, literature, theatre, architecture, and film. Expressionism in art refers to the emphasis on a subject or the distortion of elements within a painting or sculpture to convey emotion. Artists associated with this movement sought to express raw, emotional, and subjective experiences through their work, often distorting reality for emotional effect. Expressionist works portrayed human figures, still life, and landscapes in a manner that disregarded the objective qualities of the subject. 
they were more interested in expressing inner feelings and exploring the human psyche than in creating realistic representations. German expressionists used bold and vivid colors, distorted forms, and exaggerated brushwork to create visually striking and emotionally charged images. Key groups within German Expressionism were the bridge in Dresden and the German and Russian painters in Munich, leading to the formation of the Blue Rider group. The German Expressionists named the bridge appeared in Dresden in 1905. These artists, most of whom studied architecture, formed this group and were influenced by Cezanne, Van Gogh, Gauguin, and Munch. Their artworks were characterized by intense and vibrant use of color and bold lines, aiming to convey profound messages to the audience, marking a distinctive feature of German Expressionist art. The members of the bridge, including Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, Eric Heckel, Fritz Bleil, Karl Schmidt-Rotluf, and Emil Nolder, aimed to depict the psychological state of modern individuals, acting as societal critics while staying true to realistic portrayal. The artists of the Blue Rider group, including Germans Franz Marc and August Mack, Swiss painter Paul Klee, and Russian artist Vasily Kandinsky, were deeply engaged in the world of abstract art. Notably, Vasily Kandinsky and Franz Marc were especially drawn to the abstract expression within the Blue Rider movement. Ernst Ludwig Kirchner. Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, 1880-1938, was a German expressionist painter and printmaker, known for his bold and innovative artistic style. Kirchner was born in Aschaffenburg, Bavaria, Germany, and studied architecture at the Dresden Technical School, in 1901. During his time there, he met Fritz Bleil and, in 1905, along with fellow architecture students Karl Schmidt-Rotluf and Eric Heckel, they established the artistic group The Bridge. The group aimed to break free from traditional artistic constraints and sought a new, avant-garde style. They successfully created a revolutionary art movement known as Expressionism, bridging the gap between the past and the present. In his early works, Kirchner was influenced by the vibrant colors and distorted forms of African and Oceanic art, as well as the works of Vincent van Gogh and Edvard Munch. He often painted urban scenes, landscapes, and portraits, using bold, non-naturalistic colors and sharp brushstrokes to convey a sense of emotional intensity and unease. During World War I, Kirchner volunteered for the army but was discharged due to a nervous breakdown. Despite his fragile health and multiple stays in nursing clinics, he remained committed to his artistic vision, producing paintings that gained recognition. After the war, he moved to Switzerland to recover and eventually settled in Davos. However, with Hitler's rise to power, Kirchner's works were banned and labeled degenerate. Under this oppressive atmosphere, the artist tragically took his own life in 1938, leaving behind a legacy of innovative and influential art. Ernst Ludwig Kirchner Street, Berlin The painting housed in the Museum of Modern Art in New York, was crafted by Kirchner in 1913 as part of a series with similar themes. The artwork portrays a lively street scene in Berlin, offering a glimpse into the energetic and dynamic atmosphere of the city at that time. Kirchner, a key figure in the German Expressionist movement, utilized the canvas to convey the emotional and psychological states of his subjects rather than a realistic depiction of the external world. The figures in the painting, dressed in fashionable attire, are portrayed with an intentional distortion of form. 
Kirchner's use of angular lines and exaggerated features serves as a departure from traditional representation, emphasizing the emotional states of the subjects rather than their physical reality. This approach aligns with the expressionist movement's emphasis on subjective experience and the artist's inner vision. The central female figures in the foreground are particularly noteworthy. Kirchner is rendering their features, setting them apart from the indistinct, faceless mass of men in the blurred background. This intentional contrast heightens the sense of alienation and disconnect experienced by individuals in the rapidly changing urban landscape, where personal connections are overshadowed by the anonymity of the crowd. The composition's well-organized, yet limited spatial arrangement contributes to the overall geometric structure of the painting. Kirchner's use of cubist forms and expressionist intensity creates a visual tension that aligns with the emotional atmosphere he aimed to convey. This structured composition, combined with the intense colors and exaggerated figures, enhances the sense of isolation and alienation experienced by the individuals within the urban landscape. The color palette of street, Berlin is dominated by dark blue, pink, blue, purple, and black hues, creating a visually striking composition. The color choices also reflect Kirchner's departure from naturalistic representation. Instead, he employs unnatural tones to convey a subjective and emotional interpretation of the scene. The expressive use of color aligns with the broader goals of expressionism, where artists sought to evoke emotional responses and communicate personal perspectives rather than objective reality. Through this artwork, Kirchner, with his unique blend of cubist form and expressionist intensity, aimed to depict the isolation and lack of communication experienced by individuals in the midst of the bustling streets of urban life. The emphasis on the impersonal mass of faceless figures and the heightened emotional states expressed through form and color align with the broader concerns of expressionist artists during that period. Ernst Ludwig Kirchner Self-Portrait as a Soldier In 1915, after being medically discharged from military service in the First World War, Kirchner crafted this self-portrait. This self-portrait reflects not only the artist's response to the broader context of war but also his personal experiences as a soldier. Presently housed at the Allen Memorial Art Museum in Ohio, USA, the painting serves as a testament to Kirchner's turbulent mental and physical well-being, offering a critical commentary on the tumultuous instability of Germany in the early 20th century. The artwork portrays Kirchner as a slender soldier, with a cigarette loosely hanging from his lips, wearing a uniform of the 75th Mansfeld Field Artillery Regiment. Placed prominently in the foreground of an artist's studio, Kirchner is accompanied by an androgynous nude female figure positioned before a black canvas. Employing bold black outlines to delineate the woman's gaunt form reflects a pronounced influence of primitivism. Notably, the soldier is depicted with an amputated right hand, contrasted with a deformed and claw-like left hand. Kirchner opts for a vivid and intense bright blue to depict the fabric of the uniform, creating a stark contrast with the soldier's lighter, pallid yellow skin tones. The soldier's deep blue eyes exude a sense of lifelessness, underscoring the horrors of war as they mirror the blue hue of the military uniform. Kirchner's direct gaze establishes a compelling dialogue with the viewer. The intensity of his look invites viewers to engage with the emotional and psychological depth of the self-portrait, creating a sense of connection and empathy. 
The contrast between the individualized facial features of Kirchner and the standardized military uniform creates a visual tension. It speaks to the conflict between personal identity and the dehumanizing impact of conforming to the collective identity imposed by the military. Kirchner, like many artists of his generation, experienced personal trauma during the war. His self-portrait becomes a means of expressing and confronting the emotional toll of the conflict, providing an outlet for him to communicate the internal struggles he faced. Kirchner places a significant emphasis on his hands and the gaze in the painting. The angular and distorted rendering of the hands conveys a sense of tension and unease. The hands, often associated with artistic expression and creation, take on a symbolic role, reflecting the impact of war on the artist's creative post-war identity. The distorted features, especially in the hands and facial expression, showcases inner turmoil and existential angst, an approach connected with German Expressionism. In 1937, Ernst Ludwig Kirchner's painting, along with several other works, fell victim to the censorship and persecution carried out by the National Socialists in Germany. During this period, the Nazis labeled art they deemed contrary to their ideological standards as degenerate. In the same year, it became a part of an exhibition organized by Adolf Siegler titled Degenerate Art. This exhibition aimed to denigrate and vilify modern and avant-garde art forms, branding them as morally corrupt and detrimental to traditional values. The painting was displayed alongside around 650 other pieces of art, and was retitled as Soldier with Hall. The Degenerate Art Exhibition was a propagandist effort, by the Nazis to discredit modern art and suppress artistic expression that did not align with their narrow aesthetic and ideological criteria. The confiscation, rebranding, and public display of Kirchner's painting illustrate the oppressive measures taken against artists, whose work challenged the Nazi regime's rigid cultural and political agenda. The composition, remains a powerful and introspective work that invites viewers to contemplate the individual and collective impact of war on the human psyche. Kirchner's ability to convey both personal and universal themes in a single self-portrait contributes to the enduring significance of this artwork in the context of 20th century art history. Emil Nolder. Emil Nolder, 1867-1956, was a prominent German-Danish painter and printmaker associated with the German Expressionism movement. He was born in Nolder, a small village in the Duchy of Schleswig, which was then a part of Denmark. His birth name was Emil Hansen. Nolder was a key member of the group The Bridge, along with artists like Ludwig Kirchner, Eric Heckel, Fritz Bleil, and Karl schmidt trotluf He attended the Royal School of Art in Copenhagen and then studied painting in Munich. Nolder's artistic style was characterized by its intense color, dynamic brushwork, and a focus on the emotional intensity of his subjects. He was particularly interested in capturing the raw and elemental aspects of human existence, as well as the natural world. Unlike many of his contemporaries, he focused on using thick layers of color and distinct contours, avoiding distortion in his compositions. His paintings often depicted landscapes, flowers, and religious themes, with a sense of spirituality and mysticism. Despite his artistic contributions, Nolder faced challenges during the Nazi era due to his political beliefs, which aligned with the anti-Semitic sentiments of the time. Hitler's regime condemned any artwork with modernist elements as degenerate, 
leading to the removal and destruction of Nolder's works, along with those of other avant-garde artists. Following the war, Nolder persisted in his artistic pursuits, shifting his focus to religious themes. This transition was deeply rooted in his upbringing within a devout Protestant family in a rural community. His later religious compositions are of particular interest, offering insight into the artist's spiritual evolution and creative journey. Emil Nolder The Last Supper Created in 1909 and currently housed within the National Gallery of Denmark in Copenhagen, this painting captures a poignant moment, thirteen men encircle a central figure, Christ, who speaks with them while holding a chalice. This portrayal signifies the Last Supper Jesus shared with his disciples before his crucifixion. One of the striking elements of the artwork is the departure from realistic depictions of faces. The faces of the thirteen men, including Christ, have an eerie, mask-like quality. This choice by Nolder adds a sense of supernatural and emotion to the scene. Christ, positioned at the center, is depicted in vivid and bold colors, yellow, red, orange, and white radiating light that illuminates the faces of the apostles. This use of color not only serves an aesthetic purpose but also carries symbolic weight, emphasizing Christ's divine presence. The emotional intensity of the scene is palpable as the apostles engage with one another. Some are shown embracing, while others stand closely together, creating a sense of dynamic interaction. The use of distorted forms and expressive gestures adds a sense of drama and urgency to the moment, drawing the viewer into the emotional core of the scene. The positioning of Judas apart from the group is an intentional choice that heightens the dramatic tension within the painting. By placing Judas at the upper edge and having him avert his gaze, Nolder isolates him visually, underscoring his role as the betrayer. The contrast between Judas and the other disciples accentuates the impending sense of betrayal, creating a focal point of conflict within the composition. Nolder's departure from traditional religious representation extends to the overall composition and spatial arrangement. The apostles are not arranged in a linear fashion, but are engaged in dynamic interactions, with some embracing and others standing closely together. This compositional choice adds a sense of movement and immediacy to the scene. The artwork is a prime example of expressionism. Expressionist artists sought to convey emotions and subjective experiences rather than replicating objective reality. Nolder achieves this by employing vibrant colors, distorted forms, and unconventional compositions to evoke powerful emotions in the viewer, challenging the norms of religious representation. Emil Nolder Dance Around with Golden Calf This painting, created in 1910, currently is housed at the Pinakothek der Moderne, in Munich, Germany. The title itself references a biblical narrative from the Old Testament, where the Israelites, uncertain of Moses' return from Mount Sinai, made a golden calf as a symbol of the God who led them out of Egypt. Nolder's interpretation infuses this biblical theme with a modern, almost pagan celebration, creating a synthesis of religious and earthly elements. The central figures, prominently depicted in the foreground, are women, some nude or partially clad. These women engage in frenzied and sensual dances, devoid of moral constraints, celebrating the pagan idol. Nolder was known for his bold and vibrant use of color, and dance around the golden calf is no exception. The painting features a rich palette of reds, yellows, and blues, 
creating a visually emotional intense atmosphere. Nolder's color choices resonate with those of the Fauvist artists, as well as with the palettes favored by Vincent van Gogh and Paul Gauguin. The primitivist elements in the artwork evoke a sense of connection, notably reminiscent of the influence of Gauguin. The figures in the painting are deliberately distorted and exaggerated, reflecting Nolder's interest in conveying emotional and psychological states rather than adhering to realistic representation. The presence of the golden calf in the center of the composition holds symbolic significance. In biblical terms, the golden calf was a false idol, and its inclusion in the painting may carry social or political commentary, particularly given the context of the time. Let it be noted that Germany and the rest of the European countries were on the brink of the First World War. The painting is a significant contribution to the legacy of German Expressionism. Nolder's ability to infuse a traditional biblical narrative with contemporary emotion and expression showcases the movement's capacity to reinterpret and recreate artistic themes. Franz Marc. Franz Moritz Wilhelm Marc, 1880-1916, stood out as a prominent German expressionist painter and a founding member of the influential Blue Rider group, alongside renowned artists like Vasily Kandinsky, August Mack, and Paul Klee. The Blue Rider artists, notably Kandinsky and Marc, were drawn to abstract art, the name Blue Rider was inspired by a magazine co-published by Kandinsky and Mark. The magazine's cover featured an abstract drawing, by Kandinsky depicting a rider on a blue and black horse. This movement was significant in the development of Expressionism, emphasizing the spiritual and symbolic aspects of art. Mark studied at the Munich Academy of Fine Arts, where he initially focused on naturalistic and academic styles. However, he later developed a strong interest in the avant-garde movements of his time. His artistic evolution was significantly shaped during his time in Paris after 1903, where he was exposed to diverse influences, including Impressionism, Cubism, and the dynamic Futurist movement. Marx's encounter with Robert Delaunay in 1912 proved pivotal, leading to a transformative shift towards abstract shapes and vibrant hues. Delaunay, a founding member of the Orphism movement, emphasized abstract forms and vivid colors, reflecting Cubist influences. Marx earned acclaim as an exceptional animal painter, reviving a tradition that thrived in Central European countries during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. He believed that animals, especially horses, symbolized spiritual and emotional states. His paintings often featured vibrant, abstracted animals in natural settings, creating a sense of harmony and spirituality. Tragically, this charismatic painter's life was cut short during World War I in 1916, in the Battle of Verdun. Despite his relatively short life, Marx's impact on art was substantial. His innovative use of color and form continues to inspire artists all around the world. Franz Marc Yellow Cow. This artwork, created in 1911, can be found at the Solomon Guggenheim Museum in New York. It is one of several animal depictions by Mark, characterized by an expressionist style. Mark's use of bold, non naturalistic colors, simplified and geometric forms conveys a sense of emotional intensity and a departure from realistic representation. The painting is characterized by its expressive use of color and form, 
reflecting Mark's fascination with animals and his belief in their spiritual significance. Mark was deeply influenced by a sense of spirituality and a desire to connect with nature on a profound level. Yellow cow can be seen as an expression of Mark's vision of an idyllic, harmonious relationship between humans and the natural world. The curves and lines of the cow is rendered with a sense of vitality and rhythm, contributing to the overall sense of the divine in nature. In this painting, Mark used Van Gogh's beloved color, yellow, to evoke powerful emotions and symbolically humanize natural animal forms within the landscape. Additionally, Mark's exposure to fauvism during his time in Paris is evident in Yellow Cow. Fauvist artists, such as Henri Matisse, were known for their use of bold, non-naturalistic colors to convey emotion and mood. The vibrant hues in Yellow Cow contribute to the emotional intensity of the painting. The focal point of the artwork is a vibrant, jumping cow in vivid yellow, set against a well-structured, colorful background. Mark intended the prominent yellow cow to symbolize femininity, as he believed this color stirred sensuality and feminine emotions. The blue spots adorning the cow's skin are thought to represent masculinity and spirituality. The interplay of yellow and blue hints at a fusion of feminine and masculine elements, possibly alluding to Mark's own marriage. Throughout the painting, the colors yellow and blue recur, with a touch of red at the composition center. This repetition instills a sense of tranquility, while the recurring colors and flowing lines create a feeling of energy, security, and calmness. This composition is representative of the artistic style and philosophy of the Blue Rider movement. Mark sought to break away from traditional artistic conventions and explore new forms of expression. Yellow Cow reflects the ideals of the movement by embracing abstraction, symbolism, and spirituality in art. In summary, Yellow Cow by Franz Marc showcases the artist's ability to infuse his paintings with symbolic and emotional depth. Through bold colors, Mark created a work that transcends mere representation and invites viewers to contemplate the spiritual and harmonious connection between humanity and the natural world. France Mark. The Fate of Animals. In 1913, artist Franz Marc created a renowned painting now housed at the Kunstmuseum Basel, Switzerland. Regarded as one of Marc's masterpieces, a section of this artwork was destroyed by a fire. Following Marc's death, his colleague Paul Clay played a crucial role in restoring the damaged section using brown hues to contrast with the original vivid palette. This painting captures the horrors of war through the eyes of animals, serving as an ominous precursor to the First World War. Mark's inscription on the canvas's reverse, translated as and all being is flaming suffering, adds depth to the artwork's profound message. The composition of the painting is filled with symbolism and emotion. The diagonal fires resembling sharp spears evoke a sense of violence and chaos, engulfing a forest in flames. The terrified animals attempting to flee, symbolize the innocent victims caught in the crossfire of human conflict. The use of intense blues, reds, and yellows creates a dramatic and urgent atmosphere, reflecting the emotional intensity of the artist and conveying a message about the turmoil of a world on the brink of war. Mark believed in the spiritual connection between humans and animals, and here the animals seem to be symbolic of the innocent victims caught in the impending chaos of war. On the left, a distraught horse cries out, its gaze meeting that of another horse amid red flames. In the lower left corner, two trapped boars face imminent demise, surrounded by the relentless red fires. 
On the right, figures resembling wolves or deer stand unharmed, observing the devastation from a safe distance. The tension and violence culminate at the composition center, where a blue deer stands tall amidst a burning tree threatening to crush it. Mark's use of blue symbolizes masculinity and spirituality. The stretched-out neck of the deer evokes the image of an innocent being sacrificed on the destructive altar of human fury. The painting exudes a profound sadness, capturing the impending suffering and annihilation that the First World War would unleash upon all living beings. Franz Mark Broken Forms the artwork, created in 1914, can be found in the Guggenheim Museum, New York. It is considered one of the artist's final pieces and signifies a notable shift towards abstract expressionism. The painting emphasizes the artist's departure from realistic representation in favor of prioritizing shape and color, characteristic of the abstract expressionist movement. Mark's exploration of a more abstract forms is evident in this work, as he moves away from traditional artistic conventions. The color palette is dominated by Mark's favorite hues, blue, yellow, and red. These colors play a crucial role in conveying emotion and energy within the painting. The artwork features two dynamic forms in intense motion, with one appearing in vivid red on the left side and another in deep blue on the right. These forms seem to dissolve into a rainbow at both ends of the composition, a stylistic element reminiscent of the influences of Cubism and Orphism. The significance of the piece extends beyond its elements, as it reflects Marx's attempt to translate animal energy into abstract shapes, this theme aligns with Mark's broader fascination with animals and his belief in their spiritual significance. The use of dynamic forms and vibrant colors contributes to the overall sense of movement and energy within the painting. It also captures a spiritual and inner world undergoing the turmoil of an imminent war, adding depth to the interpretation. In summary, this artwork by Franz Mark showcases a departure from realism towards abstract expressionism. The use of dynamic forms, vibrant colors, and the artist's attempt to capture animal energy all contribute to the richness of the piece. Additionally, it captures the historical context of a world undergoing the turmoil of an imminent war, highlighting the broader socio-political landscape. August Mack. August Mack, 1887-1914, was a prominent German Expressionist painter and a key figure within the Expressionist group Blue Rider, alongside artists like Kandinsky, Franz Mack, and Paul Klee. From his teenage years, Mack displayed a deep passion for painting and drawing. In 1904, he entered the Academy of Fine Arts in Dusseldorf, where he studied under various artists. Between 1905 and 1914, Mack embarked on extensive travels to countries such as Italy, Holland, Belgium, Switzerland, Britain, Tunisia, and Paris. It was in Paris that he encountered the works of Impressionist, Post-Impressionist and the Fauvists painters, as well as the vibrant color cubism of Delaunay, which profoundly influenced his artistic style. His journey to Tunisia sparked the creation of a series titled Turkish's Café. Mack became associated with the Expressionist movement in Germany. In 1911, he met Vasily Kandinsky, Franz Marc, and other artists who shared his vision for a new, spiritually inspired art. Together, they formed the Blue Rider in 1911, a group that aimed to promote avant-garde art and spiritual expression. 
Max Art was deeply influenced by Impressionism, Post-Impressionism, Delaunay's Orphism, and the color dynamics of Italian Futurism. His work is characterized by vibrant colors, bold brushwork, and a focus on modern subjects, including landscapes, portraits, and scenes of urban life. His paintings, ranging between Expressionism and Fauvism, often feature harmonious combinations of color and form, creating visually striking and emotionally evocative compositions. Tragically, like his contemporary Franz Marc, Mack's life was cut short during the First World War, at the age of 27. Despite his brief life, August Mack was one of the pioneering figures of early 20th century German art. August Mack Lady in Green Jacket The artwork, housed in the Ludwig Museum in Cologne, Germany, was crafted in 1913. It captures the serene Mediterranean scene, reminiscent of the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist styles in both its color palette and thematic elements. In this painting, Max skillfully portrays couples leisurely strolling through a park. The women are depicted in elegant attire, accompanied by men in fashionable dark suits and hats. While the outlines of the people are clear, Mac leaves their facial features undefined. The use of geometric shapes in the style of Delaunay's color cubism defines the houses, mountains, and sea on both sides of the composition. Mac uses simple lines and warm autumnal hues to depict the people and the entire scene, creating a harmonious and visually appealing atmosphere. The setting suggests a tranquil day in nature, with couples halting their walk amidst the trees to admire the sea and scenic landscape. At the center of the painting stands a solitary woman in a green jacket, her posture half-turned, which appears to divide the image into two halves. Despite her obscured face, the artist conveys a sense of melancholy and solitude, adding a layer of emotional depth to the composition. This central figure becomes a focal point, inviting viewers to contemplate her story and the emotions she may be experiencing. August Mack's mastery lies in his adept use of colors and forms to convey the emotional depth of the artwork. The warm hues and serene setting evoke a sense of nostalgia and tranquility, while the deliberate choices in composition and the portrayal of the solitary woman add complexity and emotional resonance to the painting. Mack's work invites viewers to engage with the profound feelings evoked by his painting. August Mack. Farewell. The painting, created in 1914, resides in the Ludwig Museum in Cologne, Germany, serving as the artist's final and most renowned work, capturing the prevailing mood after the war's outbreak. In this masterpiece, Max skillfully conveys the prevailing pessimism and sadness through the precise use of color and shape, marking a departure from his typically vibrant and warm palette to explore darker and gloomier tones. Max's skillful use of color and shape is a crucial aspect of the painting's impact. The shift to darker tones reflects the somber atmosphere of the post-war period, offering a stark contrast to his usual vibrant style. This deliberate choice in color contributes to the overall emotional resonance of the artwork, evoking the profound impact of the war on the human psyche. The composition of the painting further enhances its emotional depth. The depiction of individuals at various points in the composition, some walking, others lost in thought, and some engaged in discussion, creates a diverse yet interconnected representation of the human experience during this tumultuous time. Despite the varied postures, a pervasive sense of immobility permeates the scene, 
suggesting a collective feeling of being trapped or stuck in the aftermath of the war. This static quality may symbolize the psychological impact of the conflict, with time appearing to stand still and movements frozen in a particular moment. The lack of facial distinctions on the depicted figures is an interesting choice by Mac. It serves to universalize the experience, making the emotions and struggles depicted more relatable and applicable to a broader audience. This anonymity may also symbolize the dehumanizing effect of war, reducing individuals to a collective, shared experience of melancholy. In summary, Mack's final masterpiece serves as a powerful and evocative representation of the human ordeal during the aftermath of World War I. Through a departure from his usual vibrant palette, skillful use of color and shape, and a composition that captures a sense of immobility, the painting successfully communicates the prevailing pessimism and sadness of the time, leaving viewers with a poignant impression of the impact of war on human beings. Paul Clay Paul Clay 1879-1940, was a renowned German artist whose diverse body of work was shaped by influences from Expressionism, Cubism, Futurism, Surrealism, and Abstraction. Clay was born in Bern, Switzerland, to an artistic family. His German father was a music teacher and his Swiss mother was a singer. At the urging of his parents, Clay studied singing, piano and violin. However, Clay's passion lay in visual arts, leading him to study painting, drawing, and printmaking. He enrolled at the Academy of Fine Arts in Munich in 1898, where he met like-minded artists such as August Mack and Vasily Kandinsky, eventually becoming a member of the influential Blue Rider group. Clay's artistic journey took a significant turn after his visit to Paris in 1912, where he was captivated by Delaunay's color cubism. This experience inspired him to experiment with colors and materials, culminating in his distinctive style. During a trip to Tunisia in 1914 with Mac, Clay became fascinated by the power of color, leading his designs to adopt geometric shapes and increased abstraction. From 1921 to 1933, Clay taught at the renowned Bauhaus School, alongside Kandinsky, contributing significantly to the institution's legacy. However, with the rise of Nazism in Germany, the school closed in 1933, prompting Clay's return to Switzerland. There, he continued his artistic pursuits until his passing. Clay's color theory is a synthesis of ideas from various color theorists, such as Goethe, Philip Otto Runge, Eugène Delacroix, and Vasily Kandinsky. Clay adapted and expanded upon them to develop a unique and dynamic system that reflects his artistic vision and philosophical approach to color in painting. Clay's color theory is often described as a dynamic and interactive system based on a six-part rainbow shaped into a color wheel. In this wheel, complementary colors are strategically placed in relation to movements that interact with one another. The emphasis on dynamic transitions suggests that Clay was interested in the fluid and ever-changing nature of color relationships. By arranging complementary colors in a way that acknowledges their interaction and movement, Clay aimed to capture the energy and vibrancy inherent in the visual experience of color. This approach aligns with the broader principles of the Bauhaus movement, which sought to integrate art, craft, and technology in a holistic and forward-thinking manner. Clay's innovative approach involved incorporating various artistic movements, materials, and techniques, including watercolor, ink, and oil paint. 
he experimented with unconventional materials such as linen, gauze, cardboard, metal, fabric, and newspaper, blending them with vibrant colors to create a distinctive avant-garde artistic direction. Paul Clay is considered one of the pioneers of abstract art. His legacy is marked by his innovative approach to art, combining abstraction with a deep sense of spirituality and creativity. Paul Clay The Tightrope Walker In 1923, Artist Paul Clay created a painting that currently resides in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., United States. This artwork, inspired by the world of the circus, features a tightrope walker holding a balance pole, skillfully navigating a taut rope. Clay, who found inspiration in the circus, often depicted tightrope walkers in his work, including this piece created during his tenure at the Bauhaus School. In the painting, the tightrope walker's precarious balance is emphasized, symbolizing the delicate equilibrium of forces. Clay eloquently described the tightrope walker as a symbol of the balance of forces, highlighting the interplay between gravity, weight, and counterweight, akin to a scale. The figure's exposure to the audience while attempting to maintain balance on the rope carries a profound symbolic meaning. This painting also draws a parallel between the tightrope walker and the artist. Both exist in a vulnerable state, suspended between earth and sky, exposed to the scrutiny of the public. They strive to distance themselves from the material world without losing touch with reality. According to Clay, the artist, like the tightrope walker, cannot escape the visible world but must navigate it, finding a delicate balance between artistic expression and the constraints of reality. Clay's work often reflects his interest in symbolism and the subconscious mind. His paintings are known for their playful and imaginative qualities, inviting viewers to interpret the imagery in their own way. The tightrope walker is a prime example of Clay's ability to blend abstraction with figurative elements, creating a visually striking and thought-provoking composition. Paul Clay The Revolution of the Viaduct The artwork, crafted in 1937, is currently resides in the Kunsthalle in Hamburg, Germany. It stands out as one of the artist's renowned pieces, showcasing his political beliefs. This painting portrays vibrant bridge arches set against a muted grey backdrop. The arches, adorned with lively hues of yellow, red, orange, and pink, outlined in black, create a dynamic composition that appears to advance towards the observer. Diverse in shape and colour, these arches appear disorganized and detached from their common base, resembling autonomous human legs in motion across the canvas. According to the artist, the intention behind this piece was to depict a revolution. The arches symbolize a rebellion against the uniformity of the bridge, serving as a metaphor for the fight against totalitarian regimes, particularly fascism, prevalent during that era. The political context of 1937 is crucial in understanding the deeper meaning of the artwork. The rise of fascism in Europe, especially in Germany, likely influenced the artist's perspective. The painting can be interpreted as a visual commentary on the imperative for individuals and artists to resist oppressive ideologies. One intriguing aspect is the metaphorical connection between the rebellious arches and artists breaking free from ideological and artistic constraints. The painting suggests that, akin to the arches resisting uniformity, artists are moving away from societal and artistic restrictions, 
advancing toward a form of expression that emphasizes individuality and autonomy. The composition serves as a powerful statement against totalitarianism, employing the metaphor of rebellious arches to convey the artist's call for personal and artistic freedom during a tumultuous period in history. Paul Clay Highway and Byways The artwork, created in 1929, is housed in the Museum Ludwig, situated in Cologne, Germany. Inspired by Clay's journey to Egypt, the painting is a manifestation of his innovative approach to art and showcases his ability to blend abstraction with elements of reality. The composition of the painting is notable for its depiction of expansive cobblestone streets that seem to stretch into the distance until they merge with the sky, portrayed in narrow blue shades at the top of the artwork. A straight lane cuts through the scene, dividing it into two distinct parts. On either side of this central path, small alleys emerge, occasionally interrupted by new hypothetical paths. The cobblestones, showing signs of decay, symbolize the passage of time and contribute to the overall sense of temporality. The overall image is reminiscent of a woven fabric, with alternating hues of yellow, blue, and green creating a mosaic-like effect. This choice of colors adds vibrancy to the painting and enhances its dynamic quality. The use of bright colors, including shades of red, yellow, and blue, contributes to the lively and energetic atmosphere of the artwork. Highway and Byways is a vibrant and abstract composition that showcases Clay's innovative approach to painting. The title suggests a contrast between the main road, highway, and the side roads, byways symbolizing different paths or choices in life. The painting features a variety of shapes and symbols arranged in a dynamic manner, creating a sense of movement and depth within the artwork. Clay's innovative approach and his incorporation of elements from his trip to Egypt, such as the cobblestone streets, result in a unique blend of abstraction and reality. As with many of Clay's works, Highway and Byways invites viewers to interpret its meaning in their own way. Clay often incorporated elements of mysticism and symbolism into his art, allowing for multiple interpretations and engaging the viewer's imagination. Paul Clay Senegio The painting, created in 1922, is currently in the Kunstmuseum Basel, Switzerland. The elderly face in Senegio is composed of various geometric shapes, including a circular head, rectangular nose, and elliptical eyes. This abstraction reduces the facial features to their essential forms, challenging traditional notions of representational portraiture. Clay establishes a hierarchy of shapes within the composition. The circular head dominates the composition, while the rectangular nose and elliptical eyes create a structured and balanced arrangement. This intentional organization contributes to the overall visual impact of the artwork. Clay used a vibrant color palette in Senegio. The face is composed of flat planes of color, and there is a harmonious balance between warm and cool tones. The use of bright colors adds a sense of playfulness and dynamism to the composition. Clay's transforms the human visage into segments of orange, red, yellow, and white. The painting features strong, bold lines that define the contours of the face. Clay used these lines not only to outline the shapes but also to create a rhythmic flow within the composition. The lines give a sense of movement and energy to the static image. The face in Senichio has flattened geometric squares, which resembles a mask or the multicolored patches of a harlequin, 
providing a thematic link to the artist performer Senichio. The eyes are devoid of detail, while a triangle and a curved line positioned above the left and right eyes create the effect of a raised eyebrow. The simplified features invite viewers to contemplate the essence of the subject rather than focusing on realistic representation. The division of the elderly face into geometric shapes might symbolize the passage of time and the changes that come with aging. The fragmented nature of the face could be a metaphor for the complexities and experiences that accumulate over a lifetime. The mask-like appearance of the face could imply a deeper exploration of identity. Masks often conceal as much as they reveal, and Senichio might prompt viewers to consider questions related to self-representation and the layers of identity we present to the world. The artist himself acknowledged the importance of subjective engagement with his works, stating that art does not reproduce the visible, rather, it makes visible. In this sense, the meaning of Senichio can be a subjective and personal experience for each viewer. The influence of Cubism is evident in Senichio. The fragmentation of form and the use of geometric shapes reflect Clay's engagement with the ideas of artists like Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque. Senichio was created during the period when Clay was moving away from expressionism towards more abstract and geometric forms. This transition is reflected in the painting, where he combines elements of abstraction with a hint of the figurative. The painting, through geometric abstraction, vibrant color, and dynamic lines, is a visually striking composition that invites viewers to contemplate not only the formal aspects of the artwork but also its emotional and symbolic dimensions. The painting showcases Clay's innovative spirit and his profound impact on the development of modern art.